welcome back to the Old Top Pillbox, but we're not in Abbotsford and we're not in the Pillbox. We are at my buddy Andy's house in a little place called Burnaby, just down the highway from Abbotsford. And we're going to be playing a game of Anniversary today over the holidays. And this is a custom board he's got here. It's got a lot of neat info on it and uh, he's got it all set up and raring to go. And he's got the tech charts all set up, uh, raring to go as well. Uh, National objectives, everything's just beautifully done up here. So we're going to start going. We haven't decided who's going to play which side yet, but we'll let you know how round one goes right after this. All right, round one is done, and uh, it's been a very entertaining first round. And, uh, well, we'll start over here. This is where I put all of America's build. A little KGF action going on here. We'll see if that works for us. Um... I built a battleship and a destroyer with the Brits, and uh, I'm kind of challenging the Luftwaffe, which is pretty healthy here, so he could definitely come out here and challenge that, but I think he wants his planes in Russia, but we'll see. We'll see what he wants to do here. He uh, sank my battleship and destroyer. My We had a 12 build for the Allies, so I put a destroyer here, and then I put a an artillery piece here in, in Cairo, and I built a factory there. He did shore up with the Germans. And the Italians came over here rather cheekily and took Transjordan with one guy. Um, the Eastern Front started out really good for the Germans. I got three hits with three infantry on the first round of combat. And after that, did I get a hit on the Eastern Front? I don't know. I, and then the, my twos just went ice cold. I think I was over 15 or 16 or something for the rest of the rest of round one. So... Yeah, my twos, you know, you've, you've known my twos. Uh, so I built a couple guys here, and I brought some Brits over to shore that up, and we'll, we'll make it uh, as painful as possible anyway for him to attack it. Uh, I got this here. Nah, not sure about that. Didn't I built a bomber for the Soviets, assuming uh, I would have taken Baltic States, because had I taken Baltic States, he only had one tank there, and I sent in two men and an artillery. Should have sent four men. Um... So now he can, yeah, he can do some damage over there. Not so good. The Japanese over here encroaching on Soviet lands. A lot of fun. And here in China, Chinese decided to just send a guy into unguarded King Sioux. But the rest of it, the Japanese, pretty typical opening here. I did take this with uh, the British to get that 5NO. Uh, and any time you can make the Japanese retake Home territory is a good time. Uh, sank an unguarded transport here, um, but the rest of it, he pulled off a masterful attack here, didn't take any losses in the Philippines, and uh, sank my battleship here for the loss of a fighter, so that was all right. That's fairly typical. And, of course, my move with my allied fleet from Australia down to Season 30, uh, one of my favorite moves. We'll see if it pays out, and... Uh, where they can go to shore up the defenses if need be. Here on round two, this eastern front's looking pretty sticky already after one turn. Let's see how we go. All right, round two is over. We're headed to round three. Boom. And here we go in the Pacific. And we've got the Americans sorting out here. Uh, we've got to put some pressure on Japan. They're kind of having fun over here. Um, he took Baracha with one guy, came down with my seven, lost two, and then he took it, took it back here, uh, and, um, I think I killed a couple of guys, maybe three men, so it wasn't horrible, but, and then he's built his three tanks here, of course. Uh, the Chinese, though, we were in Kangsu, and he didn't dislodge us, he brought a man and an artillery, and a, uh, cruiser bombard, and he didn't get me, and I took out both of his, and then the survivor... Walked down here, took Fukien, which is kind of cool. But as China tends to do in all these games, we're on our heels, coming back. Uh, over here, he took French Indochina back from the British and uh, consolidated a bit down here. I auto-killed a transport down here because I like killing Japanese transports if I can and uh, marooning these guys. But that's, uh, that's the guy that was in 30. And uh, I have evacuated India. There's just no way I could hold it. Uh, he's just got too much stuff that can all hit India. So I backed these guys off into Persia. I took Transjordan back. This is the transport that came from 30. So uh, that worked out okay. And I built three tanks in uh, egg wiped 
Uh, my bomber is here because he came by and bombed Italy for two. Uh, the Germans brought two bombers to bomb Britain and they got six on me, but only one did because I was fortunate enough to shoot one down. Built a couple of transports here, so I've got uh, three there now and enough stuff to be a bit of a nuisance. Uh, I took Norway for the loss of one guy. Um, this, the Germans came in, took Belarusia. Sorry, I'm zoomed in a bit there. Took Belarusia and Eastern Ukraine, and I had to take them back. Uh, the Italian can opener was there, that's why I needed to use that many units. So uh, Stalingrad's pretty hard pressed here. Um, see what he does with that. Uh, yeah, the Americans, Operation Torch has been carried out here on round two and uh, built a couple more transports worth of stuff to come on back. Um, not much else to talk about there. Pretty standard stuff so far, no big surprises, no crazy builds or uh, tactics that haven't worked. Uh, Japan's uh, rolling in the money. They're making their uh, two of their bonuses here and working on getting, a, they'll get a third this turn because they're just gonna walk in. So they're gonna have a lot of money at the end of this turn probably north of 50 somewhere and uh, yeah so we've got to put some more pressure on built a couple of fighters over here uh, hoping to possibly cause a little bit of grief to the Imperial Japanese Navy but the Eastern Front is where it's happening Let's see what the Germans do round three all right turn four is coming up and turn three sure was uh, exciting hot dice and cold dice all around uh, you'll see the northern fleet of Japan is gone. I came in with a carrier, two destroyers, four fighters, and a bomber, and took out two loaded carriers and a cruiser and two transports. So good trade. I think it was ninety-four dollars versus thirty-six. So we're uh, we're pretty happy about that. But the Japanese continue unopposed on the land. Uh, but this escaped his notice here. And so I was able to place a Chinese fighter there, and there we go. And when I say fighter, of course I mean infantry, but yeah, there you go. Uh, the British were able to come and be cheeky here and grab that again. But that's the last thing that that transport will do. The destroyer that could, it sank, obviously. Uh, over here I had my uh, tanks in Egypt come on over to Persia, and a couple of men walk over. Um, the Germans bulked up here with the transport, so I auto-killed that and then landed there. Uh, he came with the Italians and attacked Egypt, and he had uh, his three bombards, and they all hit. Um, and then he got one more hit. He had a tank and a, a man and two, art, uh, two men and an artillery. And we went back and forth, and I had an American bomber here, and I left it till the second last, and I finally took it off. And then it was tank on tank, and we both missed, missed, and then we finally got a hit. So it remains in British hands, but the Italians uh, are certainly in a position to give it another go on the next turn. But the Americans have moved over here to answer a little bit, and we got a bit of a shuttle going here. It's minor, but a little bit of a shuttle. Uh, the Eastern Front, the Germans took Belarusia and Eastern Ukraine, and the Soviets came and took it back. Our manpower is getting a little depleted here, though. Um, we did have an excellent battle in the Baltic States. I attacked with seven men and the bomber, and I took out a couple of tanks, a fighter, and two men, I believe. So that was uh, very successful, only for the loss of two men. So a very successful attack. Uh, Norway, the loss of one man, we were able to take that back. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I'm just kind of bulking up here. Getting ready for a bigger landing, but he's done a good job uh, here in Europe, so I, it looks like it's... If I'm going to be landing, I'm going to be taking a lot of losses here, and my air power is off helping the Soviets, so... He's been able to hold on to Western Europe quite well, but we're on to turn four now. And uh, the Germans are up. Will they take a poke at the Caucasus? Okay, round five we're just headed to, and I think both of us are... At, at various points, very frustrated with the dice. <laughs> we both had some pretty lousy dice this last round, but here we go. So Americans just making a, a bit of a nuisance of themselves up here, nothing 
too untoward though, so you can take care of that easily with his tanks. Uh, China here, got a little bit of help from the British. Uh, we're able to take out a couple of Japanese units in Ningxia, so a little bit of breathing room for them, but they didn't get any troops this turn. The Japanese were making moves on Australia, but realized they needed some more troops to take back French Indochina from the uh, British who had taken it, which opened up Burma for the British to walk into. So, But once again, India is wide open. Uh, over in Africa, the Italians did a landing and did very, very well. Uh, that was last round, though. Last round, we took it and erased everything. This round, they didn't, they didn't do quite as well this turn. Uh, they still killed four, four units and lost four units, so it's pretty even, but uh, their bombards missed. So it's tough to win and uh, when your bombards don't hit. Uh, the British came up with some tanks and beat up the Italian tanks here, but then the Italians were able to come by and kill them. For the loss of one man, uh, not a lot. Of, not a lot of action went on here. I mean, the Germans did have some stuff in here. Soviets came back and took it. Um, so the Germans are backed up a little bit, but they're still threatening Karelia. Can certainly take it. They still got. Look at all the air power. Tons of air power, and some good cannon fodder on the way. British went and took Finland, trying to keep their economy up there, and they've been doing okay with that. Uh, British fleet and American fleet are here. So we tried two landings here. The British tried with uh, six units and two bombards and got one hit in the entire... No, I got two hits in the entire battle, lost all six units. And then the Americans landed with four units and two fighters and got one hit and lost every... Well, lost the four units. I retreated the fighters. <laughs> So we're trying again next round. We got three tanks here and three men, so hopefully enough punch to go in there. But it's really tough to land in France if Germany doesn't want you to, and if the dice go ice cold. Um, yeah, I don't think there's much else that went on. Those were the the, the key points, the big battles. Um, yeah, so we're headed on to turn five, and uh, Russia it's is losing uh, the economy battle here. So gotta. Got to get some help, some more help from the Allies. Hopefully it won't be too long in coming. We'll see here. Here comes the Wehrmacht. All right, round six is about to begin, and uh, we're having some great homemade pizza here. Look at that. Look at that. Loving it. All right. Uh, Andy's treating me right today, I tell you. And uh, it's, that's homemade dough, and uh, yeah, good times. Anyway, uh, so the Americans moved up here in force. But uh, I, don't, I don't know what we're going to do with it. He's got all these tanks farting around here in the Soviet Far East. I uh, had to put up some blockers here, and his tank ran into my artillery at Novosibirsk, and we killed each other, so that was kind of cool. Chinese refused to die. Look at that. We're hanging in there, hanging tough. But I think two turns is all we got left in us. Down here, the Japanese, uh, of course, doing what they do. Australia still remains in British hands, though. We're kind of happy about that. Um, over here, the Italians did another attack and uh, did some pretty good damage. Uh, killed a bunch of units. He killed uh, man, artillery, tank. No, it's four units. Yeah, and four, right. yeah, killed four units for the loss of four units. So, And I can only build two per turn, so that's, that's a winning scenario for him. The Eastern Front, what a mess this turn was. Uh, he took Karelia, and I didn't get a single hit. He attacked with five units and a whole bunch of planes. Did I? I didn't shoot any planes down. And uh, we're playing with uh, Global 40 rules, so the, the, any aircraft only shoot at three planes each. And so uh, none got shot down. And uh, I didn't get a single hit in defense. So he had five units sitting in there. Then I attacked. I brought in uh, some units from Britain and the units from Finland, and I was able to take it over. Didn't lose any planes or anything, and one artillery left. Then I attacked the Baltic States. He had four infantry there. I attacked with four plus a bomber plus the bombards, and uh, he didn't get a hit. So it was, you can't write this stuff, I tell you. It's the, the way the dice are going. Um, yeah. And then uh, I attacked France, and on the first die roll, the Americans got one hit on five threes and three ones. I got one hit. And he got three on five twos. 
Then the next round, I got five hits, so five out of five on my threes, and he got one hit. <laughs> so and then his plane got a hit again on the next round. So anyway, we took France. Um, Britain, a couple more transports there. Didn't really need them, but I just like having a little bit more mobility. If need be, and America built some more transports. Again, didn't really need them, but the mobility is nice to have. And I brought my bomb over from the Pacific because I was really missing some air power here in Europe. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, Germany's getting squeezed a little bit if we look at the uh, income. They're down to a 20, obviously. They're going to grab France again, but uh, not, a lot of, not a lot of easy territory for them right now. So we're going to see if the Soviets can hold on. Tough, we're pretty thin in Russia here. Uh, Lots of men down south, but without British help, this game would be over, so. Gotta help out the Ruskies. All right, turn six coming up. What's Japan gonna do? Okay, here we go. Turn seven is about to begin, and uh, yeah, it's been a rough, rough, rough turn for the Allies, no doubt about it. But anyway, here we go. So the Japanese have come up in force here, so the Americans had to skedaddle. Brought down here, built some subs. And I built some air power over here, and uh, yeah, hopefully that'll, I don't know, do something. Uh, Japanese, though, they're definitely, uh, they found their footing, and it's, China's going to die this round. Uh, there's not much to be done at this point. Uh, yeah, so not much going on there. Uh, the Italians tried to come up in here. The Soviets came and took this and got the $10 bonus, because if they've got this plus... Uh, Norway, Finland, if it's allied control, they get a $10 bonus. So we got that, but we're only going to get that once. Uh, he made sure of that. I built a destroyer here, which uh, stops him from doing bombards. So that was a key. Japan did bring a guy over here and land him in Transjordan, so I had to deal with that. Brought a couple of fighters down here to help out with the defense of Cairo, should he decide to come anyway. Uh, Italians built some men there. Uh, Germany, some tanks, men, artillery... And you can see that the fleet is gone. Yes, he attacked with six fighters and two bombers. I had a battleship, a cruiser, and five destroyers. And I got three total hits and lost all those guys and four transports as well. So, yeah. The dice have been pretty frustrating for me today. Stop whining. Uh, kind of on a regular basis, not just here and there, but... Rolling a lot. Every now and again, Andy will roll blanks when he needs something really badly. So we've both felt that sting. It seems to be a little bit of an epidemic on the Allied side. We just can't. We can't get the good dice when we need it to get on onto the continent or what have you. So, uh, but hey, keep slugging away. So we're trying to keep this in Allied hands. I think it's probably going to fall again. He's just got too much stuff here. Uh, we'll see what he does. Had to build a uh, factory up here with Britain because I didn't want to sink a bunch of money into a whole bunch of ships. And uh, so we got that one there. If we can hold on to Karelia, likely get another one into Finland and start pumping out five tanks a turn. And uh, as long as we can afford them anyway, because if Japan keeps gobbling up British territory, that's going to disappear. Brought the Americans down here because his German bombers, which I was hoping to kill in the naval engagement, can reach all the way to sea zone 12 and land safely in France. So we had to come down to Brazil. And then if we want to attack France, uh, we'll have to do that at a different time. A little bit here, as you saw, mostly in the Pacific. But uh, Japan is, uh, is, like I say, has found her footing. Nothing really stopping her from doing what she wants to do right now. Uh, so... I don't know. I gotta gotta give a slight edge to the Axis right now. Uh, I think, yeah. Unless unless something weird happens here, like I get a bunch of hits, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> I think this is over. Uh, it's not looking very good. I mean, Italy's not doing much. Germany's kind of hemmed in. They're not doing you know really healthily. But once again, Japan's a monster. I don't know if this is going to stop Japan from being a monster, but we're going to see what we can do with it and see if we can keep them uh, at arm's length a little bit away from America. Anyway, all right, so on for turn seven. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we uh, we can make something of a game of this because we're kind of falling apart here. 
Hang on, Russia. All right, turn eight. We just commented how the game's kind of picking up because there's less stuff on the board. So the Japanese came up here and took that. Didn't take any hits because, of course, I'm rolling twos. <laughs> it's becoming a bit of a running gag. Uh, I had to get out of here with my stuff, so I moved my subs away one. And I built a couple of tanks in there. Uh, but I did come over here and liberate the Philippines. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how long we can hold on to that. Down here, we've got a bomber. And we've got, oh, let's see, what else have we got going on here? Well, we got this mess happening. So the Japanese have uh, brought in a bunch of stuff, and the British have brought in a bunch of stuff. So there you go. Japanese fleet remains there. I built a destroyer. My other destroyer and the Russian sub went over here, so he came and killed them without loss. But it did give me one turn of pause. So, we'll see if that was enough. Uh, the Germans and the... Well, you took Krillia this turn, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Only had one tank left at the end. Uh, I think you lost a couple planes. Uh, I think he had, to, planes, yeah, he had to lose two planes to take it, which he did. Uh, so, he's down to three aircraft here, and, but he's building another one this turn. So, get that back up there. The British building three tanks in the Norwegian factory. Oh, we forgot to do the bombing. Hmm. Okay, folks, you're going to see the bombing. Real time. Here we go. No anti-aircraft and all that. And that doesn't count. Hey, look at that. Yeah, but it has an anti-aircraft. Uh, they have, have inherent? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know they had inherent. Okay, well, we'll just uh, let him roll his die here. I didn't think they had inherent anti-aircraft in this, but I guess they do. So, uh, he rolls... And, of course, he gets a hit because that's what he's doing to me today. Getting all these hits. I'm not getting any hits. All right. There you have it. Uh, Move down to Brazil with a bunch of stuff. And there you have it, folks. So that's kind of what you just saw there is just kind of what's been happening today. Uh, I just I can't get any traction going here. I did build another bomber with the Russians. So I can reach out and smack some lone uh, German stuff if I see it or this... As you know, the Japanese come in and they're a little weak, so maybe I'm able to, you know, snag a couple of things here and there. Hopefully that works out for us. We'll let you know. Turn 8 coming up. Will I hold the Philippines? Hey, guys. All right, so we decided that actually it was Poland. Oh, yeah. Because we because we decided there was no scramble or anything. So uh, we checked over the, the uh, rules, and we figured out that actually there is no inherent AA... Uh, in this version as we are playing it so we've we've actually taken some g40 aa rules so you got to have more like you only get three shots and all that kind of stuff so anyway that's that's kind of what we're doing right now so uh i actually saved my bomber he moved back leaving a path of destruction in warsaw okay on with turn eight all right folks getting ready for turn nine and what a difference around makes uh my dice have started to heat up and andy's have gone a little soft a little soft, but he's uh, still sitting pretty good. You can see there's a lot of steel there, and you got lots of stuff on the continent now. But China remains. He ran into some stubborn Soviet resistance and ended up losing three tanks and a bomber to two infantry and one tank. So uh, that's kind of crazy. We've got a couple of Americans down here, French Indochina, Thailand, looking to help the UK get a bonus, but I don't think it'll be around by the time it's UK's turn. Uh, we did take the East Indies. Liberated me a little last round, and got our bomber here, and uh, brought our fleet out to here, one of the empty transports that used to be holding those guys. We had a fight over India. Actually, we didn't. You pull all your stuff out of there. Mm, I had a tank there. You Just a tank, yeah. I pulled all his planes here, though, so just a tank, so uh, we went one for one on the tanks there. But I think the biggest battle this round was uh, all the British aircraft came over here and we got rid of that pesky Italian fleet, all for the loss of one fighter. We got four hits on the first round, so that uh, means Italy's pretty landlocked now, so everything in Cairo can now head this way. So that helps quite a bit with the war effort. Uh, the Russians are getting a little bit of breathing space, got a couple of turns now before we're too worried about the Japanese knocking on the, the back door. But the Germans here, once again, Leningrad is under siege. I think we're on about day 700 of our 900-day siege. 
Uh, we bombed the factory here for three and one, British and American in that order. Uh, the Germans are holding tough here in Europe. Uh, the Americans just landed 10 units in northwestern Europe, which doesn't really mean an awful lot, but the Germans will likely dislodge them this round. And, uh, yeah, brought another bomber over for the Americans. And we brought some more guys down to Brazil, and we've got, that's our build for this round. Didn't build everything over here. Oh, we got to get rid of this Japanese roundel in Alaska, though. He, I think we saw that last last turn. So he, he wasn't going to fight over that. He just wanted to have some fun. So there we are. A little bit of balance for the Allies. Uh, Karelia is likely going to fall, but uh, that's happened before and it'll happen again. And uh, we'll see if Russia has any answer to, to that uh, moving forward. All right, turn nine coming up. All right, round 10. And yeah, a little bit more of the same. So I had to retreat my Japanese, my Japanese, huh? <laughs> my American fleet up north here, because the Japanese, well, good grief, they are in the house. They brought everybody down here, and they're kicking butt. I still hold on to the East Indies, mind you, but uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we also have uh, China, still doesn't have anything, but the Russians have decided to move some guys down here, so the Japanese can't just zip around. Uh, the British bringing some help over from Cairo and have quite the air force here now. We've got three bombers and three fighters in Africa. Uh, Germany having some problems. Uh, we got 20 damage on the German factory now. So it's uh, hurting for certain. The uh, British have been able to help shore up uh, Karelia, so it'll likely hold this round. Um, but, it, I mean, it could fall, but he's only got two tanks in range. He'd have to give up some aircraft. And uh, America came across and took Paris for the loss of two men. That's after the Brits wa did a walk-on, and then the it Italians came by and took it and had three guys in there. So, uh, But now uh, Italy is under threat, and uh, France can uh, have some more problems. And we're definitely going KGF now. I know it's not really first because it's round 10, but uh, I, there's just nothing I can do against Japan. He's he's playing Japan perfectly here, and so I'm just having to see if I can hold him off. So if we can hold him out of Moscow, I think we might have a shot here. Uh, this is looking a lot better for the Allies, and I know that really hurts Germany. Uh, I think Germany's got uh, 37 bucks, so that they're down to 17 this round. If they want to repair all that damage, they may not. So, All right. That's everything, folks. We're moving on to round 10, and uh, we'll see how much the board changes between now and then. Round 10, here we go. All right, folks, so 10, and we're done. Uh, yeah, the game seemed to spin a little bit uh, like a top here in the last two, three rounds. Um, so I built three battleships of America because we're done. We've decided to call it. I think I think all these guys are, are casualties of war. Um, Japan is a monster, right? Here's Japan, off in the Urals. And uh, all of China, once again, is taken. And all of this is taken. And they briefly held India again. But they just uh, they just keep coming. Um, but the British were able to take back India with some tanks from Egypt. Uh, but, as you can see, the Americans... I didn't put a round L on. I'll just do that. Have taken Italy. And the Brits have taken... Germany. Um, so it was not meant to be for the Axis this time in Europe. We had a we had a bit of a decisive battle here and here. Was that this round or last round? I think it was last round. Yeah, because Germany. Oh, that's right. Didn't, yeah. So last round when he came after my fleet here and he was unsuccessful and I think he lost two bombers and two planes. Yeah, didn't have any more aircraft. Uh, so that uh, kind of spelled doom for Germany right there because now I don't even need to protect my transports, right? So uh, the Americans and the British then set to bombing Germany and that hurts, hurts a lot. And uh, so Germany was unable to get any more traction heading this way. The Italians finished with a little bit of a flurry here um, 
and uh, took some Soviet territory. Uh, but here come the Japanese. So my response in this last round, I built six tanks with the Russians, and I pulled my uh, fleet back or my fighter cover back here. The bombers that were in Norway uh, went down, and it was France. I think he had two artillery in France, so I sent two Soviet bombers down there. Lost one, but killed both the artillery. So this was just a walk-on. This wasn't even a fight. Um, so I really, I really still like a Soviet bomber on round one. Uh, it did quite a bit of damage this game. And then I was able to build another one on turn six or seven. So it's interesting, if you can take this with the Allies and then focus here with Russia, that's worth another, an extra 10 bucks. That's a $12 play to get down here. So that was my bomber when that happened. So that was nice. But overall, this was certainly a game that was, uh, I think, a tale of two halves. And it's, uh, well, Japan was kind of just Japan. Um, but uh, once I could get uh, the Allies kind of pouring some more money and time and money and energy into Europe here, that helped slow down the Germans a little bit. And, uh, yeah, any thoughts there, Andy, on the game? Um, well, no, well played by the Allies. Um... I think they had a bit of a momentum at the beginning and then that changed I think because of the more like because of the dice um, the axes gained some momentum I think for about three rounds from maybe five six seven and the allies got right back when the dice kind of changed I mean and it's not all about dice right mm -hmm. it's, it's it's about you know moving unit strategy and all that no well played by, by the allies I made a few mistakes I don't I don't play the axe as good as I play the allies um, you know I'm still learning them but uh, yeah great game uh, once again Kurt oh it was it was I had a, I had a really good time here and uh, we're about to sit down to some home cooked uh, Greek cuisine I understand mm -hmm. so that's it uh, I'm just getting treated like a king here today so uh, but thanks for tuning in folks we really appreciate it and uh, remember to uh, tell your friends thanks for playing Thanks for playing, Andy. Thanks for hosting Thank me here today. Thank you for coming. Always a pleasure. It's fantastic. And uh, got a snowstorm to drive through on the way home, but it's well worth it. I got winter tires, so it's all good. <laughs> um, but we had a great time here today. But uh, thank you, friends, for playing. Hug your loved ones. And as we always say at the Hilltop Pillbox, may those dice be with you.